Welcome to the No More Late Fees podcast. I'm Jackie. And I'm Danielle. And we're just two best friends and ex-Blockbuster employees rewatching some of the best and worst movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. This week, we are talking about the 2003 comedy Freaky Friday with our guest, Alexa, who happens to be our pod pal from Tickets, Please. Welcome, Alexa. Hello. Hi, guys. Welcome. <laughs> If you have not checked out Alexa's trailer to get her to know her a little bit better, pause and go check it out. And we'll wait for you. No worries. We're not going anywhere. But before we dive in, let's get into some housekeeping. I don't know if it was a good one. (laughs) (laughs) If you love the podcast and you want to support us, here's a few ways that you can. Did you know writing us a review and or rating us helps us get more listeners? You do by now because we say this every episode. So please leave us reviews. Tell us how funny we are. We love to hear it. (laughs) And you could be featured. So head to your favorite podcasting platform, not Stitcher because it's going away and leave us a review. Yes. The next few episodes, we will be just threatening you full out. (laughs) Yeah. And please, if you are listening to the podcast, we are very appreciative. If you could just, if you just press the button that says subscribe, that would be great. We would love it. It'd be very helpful. And you would get notifications when new episodes are live. And if you want to support us, head on over to patreon.com slash no more late fees, become a Patreon bestie. You'll get a lot. I promise. <laughs> there are behind the scenes, us being a mess, trying to make a podcast over here, random things that come out of our mouths during the podcast that get cut. You have access to over on Patreon. Plus all of my burned CDs are now Spotify playlists. And you'll have access to that as well. So become a bestie. Join us, will you? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, you just made me think of Myra from Shit's Creek when she's doing the wine commercial. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's get into this week's movie, Freaky Friday. Single mother Tess Coleman and her teenage daughter Anna couldn't be more different. And if it's driving, oh, sorry, couldn't be more different. And it's driving them both insane. After receiving cryptic fortunes at a Chinese restaurant, the two wake up the next day to discover that they have somehow switched bodies. Unable to switch back, they are forced to masquerade as one another until a solution can be found. In the process, they develop a new sense of respect and understanding for one another. The movie stars Jamie Lee Curtis, Lindsay Lohan, Mark Harmon, Chad Michael Murray, Harold Gold, Rosalind Chow, and Lucille Song. It was directed by Mark Waters and the screenplay by Heather Hack and Leslie Dixon. You can watch it now on Disney Plus, and I don't think it's going anywhere. So that's the good thing. If it's on Disney Plus, most likely it's staying there. Way to go, Disney, for doing something right. (laughs) (laughs) But before we start, let's get into our ratings rewind. So you know the drill. Before we get into the movie, we'll reveal the rating our Y2K versions of ourselves would give. Then at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating. Our scale consists of would buy it, would buy it again. The best would play on repeat. Five-day rental. Would watch again. Two-day rental. Eh, okay, but nothing to write home about. And same day rental. Garbage dumpster fire. Just trash. (laughs) Couldn't pay me to watch it. I hate it. It's the worst. And the other adjectives you'd like to throw in there? No, I'm good. I'm good. In a word, garbage. (laughs) (laughs) So, Alexa, what is your Y2K rating of Freaky Friday? I think I have to go would buy, would buy again. It was a constant repeat for me when I was younger. (laughs) Love it. What about you, Danielle? Same. I have it, own it, and 
it wasn't difficult at all to rewatch this. I was like, and it went by so fast. That doesn't happen often. Like sometimes rewatching the movies, I feel like it's a chore. <laughs> like I'm not excited all the time. Yeah. And it's not that the movies are bad. It's just, this is definitely a comfort level. And also for me, my mom like loves six movies from the sixties and stuff. And so like all of the original OG Disney movies that they remade, I had watched those versions like a ton of times. So when they remade them, I just fell right back in. <laughs> Maybe that's why I like the parent trap so much, Jackie. Maybe. The n- nostalgia also, on top of nostalgia for you. It's nostalgia, but also it's a damn good movie. I'm just going to say it. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of those movies where <laughs> I wish that we had like a something in between two and five day because I remember watching it but it was not in heavy rotation I will give it a a five day I didn't hate it but I just I think I watched it a couple of times and then forgot about it when I was watching it I was like I was just in my feels happy and I was like no this is not one Jack it's gonna be like no it's just not it's not (laughs) Did you get out your rosary and start like praying that <laughs> I could? My mom was here. I couldn't even say anything because I got yelled at the last time. She Christine but... does like to. Christine's a Jackie apologist, and I'm here for it. <laughs> well, she got mad at me because she was watching it with me, and then she started talking, and it not even about the fucking movie. And I was like, "You got to go." <laughs> I didn't even tell her she had to go. I was like, "But I said, mom." I'm really trying to pay attention. I need to watch this. And then she went upstairs and was like, fine. And I was like, you can watch. She's like, I don't see you enough. And <laughs> I need to talk. <laughs> it's like, okay. So she left. So. <laughs> I'm sorry Danielle did that to you, Christine. Whatever. <laughs> I think she's listening. She ain't listening. I would have listened to you. I paused the movie to talk to my niece. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Tell us well, about let's... the box office. <laughs> <laughs> so this movie had a budget of $26 million and made over $160 million worldwide. That's some good shit. In its opening weekend, it grossed about $22.2 million, finishing second at the box office behind the movie SWAT. Sometimes I'm just surprised by the movies that like did well because they do not stay in my memory. <laughs> I know LL was in that movie SWAT, but that was about it. That's all I've I never know. even heard of SWAT. <laughs> yeah, Colin Farrell, LL Cool J, they're SWAT people. <laughs> it is I think Samuel Jackson might be in it too. Oh, I don't remember. I remember the cover box that's it yeah me too and it was the one of the movies on box office game the other day and I was like oh yeah I forgot about that movie (laughs) oh I have I I'm so behind I need to catch up so yeah did really well not surprising and this just was like again a slew of old Disney vault movies kind of like what we're seeing right now Disney is going into the vault and making live actions of all their successful cartoons animation so back then they huh I saw the little mermaid I don't know what that means it was just okay you don't like the original you don't remember you don't have any nostalgia for it you don't like the original it's not that I don't like it it's just it's okay wow (laughs) I have hard opinions on random things. Childhood wanna... Alexa is her heart's breaking. <laughs> <laughs> the thought that anyone could not like the original Little Mermaid. <laughs> I don't know why you went to see the the new one. <laughs> I don't. Moral support because Alyssa wanted to go. Oh, poor Alyssa. Was being a good friend. Alyssa, I wish I was there. We would have sang cried. together. Oh. And then I looked at her and handed her a napkin. <laughs> Oh All right. Anywho, so this was a time when they were remaking movies. So obviously, this is a few years after The Parent Trap, which was, again, one of Disney's remake 
And you would think that would make Lindsay Lohan a shoe in for the role of Anna, but it was not. This movie would have looked very different with the original original casting. So you guys ready? Ready. We have Michelle Track- Trackenberg, who was cast as Anna, who and she was also cast as the twins in The Parent Trap. Both she had to back out wow. of, and they went to Lindsay Lohan. Um, the this time around, she had to back out because of her contract on Buffy because she was playing Dawn at oh, the time. Okay, I'm actually glad because I hated Dawn on Buffy so much that. <laughs> I would not have been happy <laughs> as much as I think <laughs> Michelle is a great actress. I did I would it wasn't in state of mind. By the time she did Ice Princess, things had died down for me. <laughs> so we have Michelle Tra- Tra- eh, Trachtenberg as Anna. And then we had Annette Benning as Oh Annette, wow. Yeah. As Jamie Lee Curtis's role. But weirdly enough and to this day we still don't know why Annette Benning pulled out like six days before they started filming and there's just like there was no reasoning behind it whatsoever also Tom Selleck was originally going to play the role of Tess's boyfriend Ryan but once Annette Benning left he exited as well wow so a lot of but I think the cast that they got was perfect. Yeah. It, it worked out. And this was really good for Jamie Lee Curtis's career at the time. She was, they were like considering her a washed up horror queen because they show no respect for horror. But this showed her like very amazing co- comedy chops. Yeah. She was only like 40 something years old when she did this movie and they were already tall and her washed up. That's crazy. <laughs> We see you, Jamie Lee. <laughs> right. Also, some other weird castings. Gwen Stefani was offered a role as one of Anna's friends or to be in the band. See that? I feel weird, like wouldn't but she I could look see it. old? Wouldn't she have looked too old to be? I, I, might, I, I guess. Don't know. And Kelly Osborne was also offered the role as the... Anna, which role? Right? Not Anna. The one... Give me a second. No. How is she, it's the Christina Vidal part but I don't remember what her name was but she had I think Kelly Sharon Osborne's mom and not mom Sharon Osborne had cancer so Kelly opted not to she, you know she wants to spend time with her mom in case things went wrong best fucking decision ever do you know how I'd be scowling if she was in this movie <laughs> Let me see. The scowl. Yeah. It's with a <laughs> an it a twitch. A, a twitch every time she would come on. <laughs> so fucking annoying. Like people who can't act just because they're famous should not just be in a movie. Unless it's like just a cameo, fine. But like please do not make me struggle through her struggling, you know? It would have been so distracting too. Like there's yeah. no need for that there's no need for her friend to be such a famous person like yeah <laughs> she's not I, in it that much where she needs to have like a huge a, a huge name play the part well i'm just glad that she didn't one because i didn't want to see her and two because <laughs> it gave a, a dash of diversity in this cast and christina vidal is like an og i mean i loved her what was that movie she was in with michael j fox when we were younger in the 90s where he was like her manager and she was like a child actor i'm talking Early to suit? myself no no I don't oh, know. no <laughs> jesus i think jackie didn't exist in the early 90s <laughs> it was mostly in the, 80s. the 80s but I yeah i have a whole <laughs> i have a gap in knowledge <laughs> find out jackie's really a computer and i'm being maybe i did time travel danielle (laughs) and i have to keep my secrets life with mikey i could not get it yeah she was in life with mikey and i've been in love with her ever since (laughs) 
Okay. Let's get in the movie. Get, on, get into it. Yeah. So the movie starts. It's morning. Jamie Lee Curtis plays Tess, mother to Anna, who play who is played by Lindsay Lohan or Lowen, however you pronounce I it. I forget mm. what she's she. <laughs> I can't. No. <laughs> We're in a renaissance of that <laughs> where everybody's coming out and saying what their name is supposed to be, which like good for them. I'm glad, but also you got to give us some grace. It's hard. We've all known your name to be a certain thing for many, many years. But Lindsay just making shit up. Okay. <laughs> it's not how her name is like she making shit up. I saw a TikTok the other day that Taylor Lautner said it's supposed to be Lautner. And I was like, I don't accept Boy, that. <laughs> we're, you're lucky we still talk about you. Okay. Christ Cry- didn't Del say we were pronouncing his name wrong too? Whatever. Well, I think he gave a, an explanation where he wants it to be pronounced how we've been saying it because his father was, I don't know. I think he gave a longer explanation that was like, I think we're still good to call okay. him now. <laughs> and, and William Defoe. Willem. He, I know, but he changed it. It's he even said, Oh, I just wanted people to call because I think his dad and him had like the same name or something. And so he's like, I just want people to say Willem. And I'm like, oh. look at people just everybody creative now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> One day I will show up and say, It's not Danielle. It's Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> There's two L's. <laughs> so, so and you will be... hear both L's. <laughs> <laughs> should it be like Danier? <laughs> oh, oh right. The, the L's are si- silent. <laughs> the, the L's are wise somehow. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> anyway, back to the movie that we only <laughs> talked about for two seconds. The other notable people, Grandpa shows up. He's just referred to as grandpa. There's little brother, Harry. And then the fiance, Ryan. Is that mm-hmm. it? Okay. So that's who we have. And Ryan is played by Mark Harmon. We don't get as much Harmon, Mark Harmon as we I, I'd like in movies. Every time Agreed. he shows up, I really enjoy him. What other movie was he in? He, he's on... Is it Law and Order? NCIS? He's on one of those shows. Yeah, He's but what, NCIS, what, I think. But you said we don't get in enough in movies. And I was like, what movie have you seen him in? Because I was just like pulling out of my head trying to figure out where I've seen him in a movie. <laughs> I don't know. I'll look it up. Anyway. <laughs> He's so, a handsome older man. I'll just is. say that. Yeah. And some totally of the things different vibe about- than Tom Selleck, though. It's weird that I always think it's strange when the alternate casting is completely different when, than what they end up going with. Because I think Tom Selleck would have been a completely different version of that character. He would have seemed way more like stern, and yes. I couldn't imagine him being okay with the antics. But the weird thing is, I think I could totally see him with Annette Benning. Maybe it's because he has like the dark hair, like Warren Beatty, yeah. so it just like feels right. Plus, I just feel like Annette Benning is such an amazing actress. Like that woman could do nothing wrong in my eyes. Not that Jamie's not a great actress. I I really like Jamie's comedic timing, and I don't know if Annette would have been able to. Oh, Annette would have done it a hundred percent. Cause Annette can be very funny and she can be dramatic. Like, you know, yeah, I think she would have been able to do it a hundred percent. I believe I, I, I think it's worked out that Jamie did it and she had really good chemistry with Lindsay. I think that might I wonder if Annette would have had the same kind of chemistry with Lindsay. But he played yeah. the president in Chasing Liberty. Oh, that's right. He was the daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so Tess, the mom, is trying to get Annie out of bed. Typical teenager stuff. Sleep until the last minute. Then get, give an attitude like, I'm already ready. And 
So we're kind of introduced to Anna and then we find out that she is the maid of honor. Mom is getting married this coming weekend to Ryan and mom is also ruining her life. Won't let her drive because she can't find her permit (laughs) and doesn't believe that the little brother starts shit and is always telling Anna to be nicer to her brother. He's a little shit annoying as hell he's so irritating (laughs) yeah he did his role very well he did (laughs) and then we get the line i didn't realize this is where i first heard it the make good choices i used to tell my students that all the time (laughs) Uh like oh that's where i got that and so now we are at school she has the same shirt on as someone else God, what a nightmare. The tragedy. (laughs) And her solution is to turn it inside out. I don't understand. I don't either. And then we are introduced to Jake, played by Chad Michael Murray, who never washed his hair this entire shooting. Literally, it looks like he hasn't showered in over six months. (laughs) I I just want to say, I know we're all about... Let's not have real teenagers play teenagers. But I feel like when you're actually having a chance to have real teenagers play teenagers, let's get the love interest to be the same or yeah. a very small margin. That man was damn near 30. He was 22. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> but he was still like, that's a... So- Lindsay Lohan was only 16. So that was... Oh, yeah, yeah. And that happened in Cinderella's story, too, when he was in that, because Hilary Duff was 15, and he did that movie after this movie, so mm. I guess oh, he might have been like, I have to double check, but I feel like he was 22 in this, when he was filming, or at least 21, 22 when he's filming this one, and then it's got to be like 23, 24 in the other it's one. It's funny, because he looks younger in Cinderella's story than he does in this. It's because his hair hair. is cut. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And they bleached it more blonde, I think. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just I I never understood that. And Lindsay, this was her first. Huh? Go ahead. (laughs) Go ahead. I just read this little tidbit of information that Chad Michael Murray revealed during a 2019 appearance on Busy Tonight. That he also made out with Jamie Lee Curtis off screen to help settle Lohan's nerves prior to their kissing scene. What? Yeah, Jamie a little weird too. (laughs) So what had happened was (laughs) Lindsay, this was her first on-screen kiss with this man. Okay. Mm. And I say man, not just because he was 22, but in in life experiences, right? Mm -hmm. Like he's able to drink he's should be done with college like totally different than this high school girl anywho um she was really nervous about the kiss so what does her her on set mom do she's like don't worry honey let me show you how it's done (laughs) so she pulls chad michael murray and just starts making out with him to show Lindsay nothing to worry about and her kissing scenes with uh, with him took like 15 to 18 takes and almost a day and a half, two days wow. to film because it was, yeah. She was living her best life. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. So... I to me, I think what makes me just so creeped out about the whole the whole scenario is that on this movie that happens with Jamie Lee and she's kissing Chad for the first time on screen. But then when he does a Cinderella story, it's even more creepy because Hillary Duff is uh, having the same situation where she's having like a full on makeout scene, having to have the scene with him. And the director pulls them both into their trailer and like tries to like have them practice in front of him, like in a real Ew. creepy way. We do not protect our children. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. And then years down the line, we find out that Chad ends up like dating 
a girl that was an extra on One Tree Hill who was still in high school when by the time he's in One Tree Hill, he's really a full ass grown adult. Oh my God. You're just giving me more reasons to not like Chad Michael Murray, which I already had enough. I (laughs) don't know that man. I'm just telling y'all what I heard. Hey. Allegedly. Y'all could ju- alleged <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> Y'all can make your own decisions. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so Jake walks right past her, doesn't even notice her. The way that he looked at her was almost like how Edward thought Bella smelled. <laughs> yes. Right? Like he kind of just is uh, like the ten- on her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, ew. What is your problem? I probably Did you look in the mirror it. this morning? <laughs> right. At least my hair can't ha- doesn't have enough grease to fry french fries with, bitch. <sighs> and now we are in Mr. Bates' class. His name in it is an homage to Janet Lee, Jamie Lee Curtis's mom, who starred in Psycho. And so Mr. Bates is a douchebag. He's holding a grudge, we find out. And so... Gross a, grudge. A really yeah. gross grudge. And Anna keeps getting failing grades because of this grudge, even though there's nothing wrong with her paper. And then we cut to... Tess is a therapist, and we see... Oh, my heart. Willie Garrison oh. Stanford from Sex and the City, R.I.P., is one of her patients, one of her more needy patients. (laughs) He wants to make sure she's going to answer his call while on her honeymoon in Hawaii. I feel like she had so... I think just her role alone was like a really cool precursor to like what we experience now. Mm -hmm. If you think about how we grew up, we didn't... People didn't have access to us as much. Like if you called us, we weren't home... You got to wait, right? Yeah. She had like a Palm Pilot, a cell phone, could have had a beeper. Like everything was buzzing. She was doing way too much, a whole yeah. bunch of multitasking. And it, I felt anxiety just watching her yeah. exist in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, his character is, I don't want to say crazy because that's not right. But he's extra. he was he's clingy as hell. Yes. Neurotic. My, yes. <laughs> There's like a, a dr- clinical term. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And now we cut back to high school. It's time for volleyball. And there's this girl, Stacy, who I guess Anna used to be friends with when they were younger. And Stacy's just a mean girl. She's out to get Anna, whacking her in the back of the head with the ball over and over again. So Anna gets tired of it and she defends herself. And then she gets detention because of it. I feel like Stacy and Anna have the same dynamic, essentially, that Regina and Janice Janice have in Mean Girls. Mm. And I mean, Mark Waters did direct both movies. So you have people who two girls who used to be friends in elementary school have a falling out and Mm. now one picks on the other. Mm. Truth. So now we're leaving detention. Anna drops her bag. All her stuff falls out. And lo and behold, Jake is there to help pick her stuff up. (laughs) He picks up exactly one item and it is a guitar pick. (laughs) And he's like, awesome. Are you in a band? What do you play? (laughs) (laughs) I use this to pick my nails, bitch. (laughs) And He does offer her a ride home, but he has a motorcycle. So, I mean, Anna does have a good head on her shoulder. She says, no, like, my mom will kill me if I show up at home riding Mm -hmm. on the back of a motorcycle. But I think she was kind of scared, too. Like, yeah, you've never ridden a motorcycle. That could be kind of scary. And it seems like she wants to continue the conversation, but she's like, momentarily distracted and she looks back and he's already taken off on his motorcycle so now we're back at home um, distracted by that crazy ass teacher harassing her oh about the honors qualifying exams that she has to take the next day Uh, there's a lot going on in this weekend 
It's not even a weekend. It's one day. Yes. <laughs> We a have a lot honors, going on. <laughs> honors qualifying exams. We have mom's rehearsal dinner and then soon parent we teacher have... conferences. Yes. A surprise guest appearance on a talk show. Yes. <laughs> and then we have it's not called the wing ting wing ding. It's called the wango tango. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. There's just a lot going on on this Friday. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> And so now they're they're at band practice. Sorry. They're at Anna's house and the girls are practicing. And then you see Tess come in struggling mm-hmm. with the groceries. First and foremost, my mother would have been like, bring your ass and get these groceries out the car. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And then what we missed was that Anna's little brother. Yeah, is that his peak annoying when he's yeah. running around with the underwear on his head? I swear I wanted to shove him over. I can't. Uh, so, <laughs> but also, like, how disrespectful, like, the reason that she puts the underwear on his head is the fact that he is messing with her guitar, which is not a cheap yeah. guitar. Yeah. And not just, like, kind of playing with it, but, like, re- taking drumsticks and hitting it. Yeah. yeah. Just not good. So... Of course, now he plays the victim as a man would. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. As a little Uh, brother would. As a little brother would. (laughs) And so now the mom's only seeing one one aspect of it. And she's stressed because she was at the grocery store. People were blowing up her phone. She's trying to plan the it, not the salmon. (laughs) Right. Trying to plan this wedding and everything. So She's just trying to get dinner ready. So much chaos is happening. And I'm sure she wants Anna to help a little bit, you know, Mm -hmm. but Anna, like most teenagers are kind of just, they only see their world and her mom can't get past her world as well. So they're on a collision course for sure. And so Anna's best friend gets a phone call that one of the bands has dropped out of the Wingo Tango at the House of Blues and the following night. And they're all really excited, but then Anna's like, it's my mom's rehearsal dinner. I don't think I can go. Valid. Like, I get it, but if it's your mom's rehearsal dinner, come on. Let me tell you something. The way that I realized that I imprinted and related to this story, this part of the storyline, when my mom was getting married, she was a nightmare. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) On her wedding day, I wasn't feeling like I got sick. And she said to me, you're putting on that you're worse than you are because it's my day. Oh, no. I was like, okay, so one of my new step aunties gave me some drug that had me high as a kite at that <laughs> wedding. <laughs> and I wasn't allowed to do anything. Like, I had to be for there for all the events. She, If I said, can I go to Jackie's? Nothing. I could not. Mm-hmm. It was like she couldn't focus. She just needed me to be in the house. She needed me to be at these events because she didn't want to think about me or worry like where I could possibly be or anything like yeah. that. So Anna girl, <laughs> I felt your pain. <laughs> and so mom is not happy with the band pa- practice. I guess they're past- practicing longer than they should be. And so she goes and turns off the power to the garage to call an end to band practice. And while Right before she does that, she gets a phone call from the principal that Anna was in detention twice today. And so, which I don't even understand how that's a thing, but okay. Yeah, their detentions just seem to be like open season all the time. You yeah. Know, like, yeah. <laughs> it's like time out. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it's just there. Usually you get the slip. Mm-hmm. And then you have to go like after school or like right. something where you're there for like a half an hour, an hour afterwards, not like during class. Or I if never... you got too many detentions, then you had to do Saturday detention. Mm. I never got regular detention, but I did get a Saturday detention. 
You went straight to Saturday. Wow. I did. (laughs) I was dumb enough to skip school one day. Mm. And it, it the class that I skipped, I shouldn't have skipped it. Our teacher was a, an ex-nun. She didn't play none of that. Mm. So she wrote that up real quick. Had to tell my mom I was going to go hang out with a friend. I wasn't telling her I got Saturday and then had to explain that I skipped school <laughs> to go watch the Passions. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a good reason. I mean, it was it was a quality reason for me at the time, but yeah. You had to find out what was going on with Timmy. I know. (laughs) That show. Quality. (laughs) So now Anna's back in the house. She goes upstairs, sees her brother and his friends reading her journal. This was fucking crazy. (laughs) (laughs) One of her bras. It's next level. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> no. I would have straight punched him in the face. It's crazy. You stretching my bra out? You know how much those cost? <laughs> well, and it does remind me of Booger from Hot Chick. But yeah. Booger had a reason why he wanted to be wearing women's right. clothes. He had a legit reason. This little brother was just an asshole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Johnny would never do this. Never. (laughs) So this is when Anna realizes, oh, shit, I don't have a door. Mom took it because she got sent to detention twice. This is when my mom started talking during the movie because she took my brother's door off. And she said one of my brother's friends said that he's like, man, when you took Christian's door, that was priceless. (laughs) (laughs) such a bizarre punishment i would never have even thought of it yeah sorry my mom called i'm just letting her know that i'm recording oh no worries so yeah she has no door and it's funny because like when she finds out she like yells by the way the mom had like did we say that she had cut the electricity when they were playing yeah yeah so anna's already at like the Mm -hmm. her point of no return but grandpa and ryan are like oh shit here come the (laughs) the fireworks and i love how tess is just sitting at the Mm -hmm. dining room table like calm and ready to to give Mm -hmm. her the business come at me bro (laughs) yeah (laughs) and i like how she says privacy is a privilege Mm -hmm. but then they all go out to chinese food chinese dinner (laughs) right (laughs) like not you're staying at home and eating leftovers while we all go to a nice dinner and it gets to go i just also don't something anna doesn't trust her mom to listen to her Mm -hmm. and tess doesn't understand anna or try to really listen to her or even have this the thought process of like okay it's not like my daughter to start a situation with someone and she's already told Anna has already told her that her and the girl Stacy do not get along and that Stacy is not nice like they're not friends yeah so it just it really pissed me off because one thing I say about my mom she ride or die I don't fuck with somebody no more. She don't fuck with that person no more. You well, I think what, what I mean? the problem is is that everything that comes out of Anna's mouth is like <sighs> mom like don't you understand like this, like just <laughs> just say it like a regular person anna maybe she'll hear you yeah <laughs> well, a lot of we- hormones going on emotions yes. yeah and we do see stacy say hi to tess and she's like sorry guys she's like six sickly sweet about it she's mm-hmm. like hi how are you so like Anna's mom should be trusting her that like she's putting on that front, but yeah. the girl is even, also playing the mom. Doesn't even matter. My daughter don't fuck with you. I don't fuck with you. Or at least <laughs> if my daughter is with me, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like if once my daughter leaves, I'm like, oh, hi, Stacy. <laughs> you know something. But she just doesn't get it. But she gonna yeah. learn. 
She won't learn today. <laughs> so we're at the restaurant now. Ryan is trying to bond with Anna. He's he's trying to talk to her. She's not being receptive to anything. She's just in her feelings that, oh my gosh, Jake likes me and mom took my door and no one ever listens to me. And so she's kind of just shutting Ryan down at every turn. Then Anna does ask if she could go to the Wango Tango. Mom says, absolutely not. It's my rehearsal dinner. Are you crazy? And this is where we start getting into an argument. They kind of go into a back hallway. And this is where Asian Granny doesn't mind her business. <laughs> yeah. I, on one hand, love that there's some representation. Yeah. But on the other hand, it is very stereotypical Asian representation. Yes. Like, it would have been great if they were just, you know... Grandma maybe could have been a little crazy. That's fine. You know, yeah. gr grandmas are crazy. But just, yeah. And in, in, in their argument, Anna does say, like, you wouldn't last a day in high school. Mm -hmm. And your life is perfect. And it was like the trailer comment. I heard her say it and I was like, I can hear this in the trailer as the <laughs> as the as the line they use yes. to set up them switching bodies. <laughs> <laughs> so grandma comes by, hands them both fortune cookies. Anna then goes and locks herself in the bathroom to eat her fortune cookie. <laughs> And so we get the split screen that we see on behind Danielle mm -hmm. and they both read their fortune at the same time and then cut to the next morning, them waking up in each other's bodies. Right. There's like an earthquake that they only oh, can yes. feel apparently. Yeah. And it's funny because they can only feel it in this part but yeah but then later back, inconsistency they all everyone feel, could it. feel it yep. yeah. so i don't know if that everyone else could feel it in that room because they're in the room with them and when they were they were away from the family at the time yeah. but that always confused me <laughs> well and then this makes because grandpa's from out of town it seems and this makes grandpa paranoid about earthquakes the entire rest of the movie. He's triggered. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even experience the earthquake, but he's triggered either way. <laughs> he, he can't hear anything, but he hears earthquake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so uh, the next morning we, we hear an internal dialogue of Tess, all the mental, like her mental to-do list, mm -hmm. all the things she needs to get done today. And then she wakes up in Anna's body and freaks out. <laughs> but then Harry comes running in screaming, mom's dead. <laughs> 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 and so they both go to mom's room and it is Anna sleeping how she usually sleeps, dead to the world. And so it's a role, re role, role reversal where same thing is happening. She's trying to yank her off the bed. It's just in different bodies now. And then this was, this is where we get the classic line. I look like the Crypt Keeper. The best. <laughs> <laughs> the way she feels her face and then looks in the mirror. It's the funniest moment. It's so great. And then Alexa has that that image behind yep. her. Yes. <laughs> yep. And they one both thing, one detail that I love is that Anna or Tess and Anna's body keeps accidentally being nice to the brother. Like when she calls him honey and he's like, what are you like? Why are you calling me honey when she's trying to <laughs> yes. calm him down because he's freaking out because he thinks their mom is dead? She's like, oh, honey. And she like pets him. And, and it's like funny. It's a funny through line through the whole thing that she keeps accidentally being nice to him. Yeah. And he's <laughs> creeped out by it. But yeah. like also secretly, all he wants is his sister's attention and mm -hmm. loves her and thinks she's like the coolest person ever. So that's how little brothers are. So the, the initial plan is let's run at each other as fast as we can I to try and swatch back, swap back. 
So this is like a throwback to Bewitched when Darren is actually split into two different versions of himself and he like runs in like merges. So I I think that's like a nod to that. But yeah, like it's not like you have two parts of yourself split up. It's literally you're you bumping into each other. You think it's going to switch? I don't get it. And they both think it's such a good idea. They're like, yes, right. yes, this is absolutely going to work. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> and they don't need the way they talk about it, too. It's like there's they both no knew what it is. They, yeah, right. they, know, they know exactly what the other's saying, even though there's no specifics as to what they're going to do. It's like, eh, eh, <laughs> All she does eh? is this, and somehow they know what to do. <laughs> that could mean so many things. <laughs> Peanut butter jelly sandwich? Also, Are we does, clapping? also it, the logic doesn't even make any sense, because that's not how they swapped bodies in the first yeah, place like right. you think they would do something to that they had already done presumably <laughs> that's what made them swap bodies but they're like let's just run into each other at full speed and hopefully that works <laughs> it does not and, no. and then ryan is like you you guys need a ride mainly because she was so preoccupied the day before Tess when she was driving she drove into the parking lot of her job the wrong way and her tires got fudged up oh yeah I didn't even I didn't even realize that when I was watching like why she needed the ride I completely forgot yeah so now Ryan has to take them and she's being full on in it because they had to make a decision like oh we're gonna we have to go through the day. There's just mm-hmm. too much stuff. Like Anna has to take her test and she tests in Anna's body both like, oh, I could totally, this yeah. this will be easy. I could totally do high school. And because of the clingy patient test, test needs Anna to show up as her mm-hmm. because he might like hurt himself or something. So. And Tess's she- advice is just ask them how they feel about that. Like, don't give any <laughs> advice. Don't do anything else. It's a like, that's the only tool in Anna's toolbox when she gets to <laughs> mom's work. Yeah, because yeah, she's not just dealing with the clingy patient. She's got multiple pl- patients right. that she's got to deal with. Oh, my God. It's a mess. And when they're in the car, I mean, like, I don't know how Ryan didn't pick up on the fact that, like. He's a little oblivious. But when he first comes in, she that is one of my favorite lines, though, is when he comes in and they're on the stairs and they're completely not acting chill at all. And they have no idea what to do or say. <laughs> <laughs> and he's and he's confused the whole time. And she goes, could you like chill for a sec? That's my favorite line <laughs> through the whole thing. I quoted to my friends all the time. I just also <laughs> feel like the whole thing if you notice the dynamics with the women and the men in this movie how it's kind of played off that their erratic behavior which Mm. should have been like a huge red flag warning something is going on is just easily played off at oh women yeah you know like oh those emotional women they're so crazy well, we'll get into that later with Jake, his batshit insane behavior. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. I didn't understand. Any of it. There, none of that makes any sense. No at all. damn sense at no. all. So now we are driving to school. Oh, wait. Before we drive to school, we have to get dressed. And so it's. Well, that's actually very funny. <laughs> <laughs> and it's. Anna as Tess is in like a white tank top with like a black bra under it. Like she's dressing as punk as she possibly can. Meanwhile, Anna or Tess in Anna's body is dressing up like she going to sell sell vacuums door to door. <laughs> she's which is I think reflection of so originally Anna's character was supposed to be goth. But when Lindsay Lohan went to audition, I, this is her sec. I think it was her second round of auditions because when she originally auditioned, Mark Waters wasn't quite impressed. He knew she was a star, but like he did, he mm-hmm. didn't think she'd be right for the role. But then when she did her second audition, she actually showed up in like an Abercrombie Fitch outfit, completely opposite of goth. Her agent was like, what the hell are you doing? Because <laughs> she just didn't feel like goth would work. And it doesn't relate to a lot of people as much. She was actually right. Now, if I think about it, 
with Michelle Trak- Trackenberg and her being goth, I could totally see that, those vibes yeah. with mm-hmm. her and her winning over Lindsay. I just couldn't see Lindsay being goth at all. Mm-mm. But what she does here is kind of like goth light, not even goth. It's like alternative FM. Yes, that's that's definitely the word she's like dressing like she's a rocker that's what right. she's yeah. an alternative rocker she's avril levine and that very 100 percent down to the yeah. hair she's <laughs> that's what she was going for with the hair her her hairdresser was so mad that she was messing up her be- highlights yeah messing up her beautiful natural red hair with What's blonde. funny is when I was watching this when I was younger, I thought her hair was so cool. And I watched it yesterday and I was like, oh my oh God, my it's God. so much even worse than I remembered it. <laughs> yeah, it's so <laughs> it's bad. bad. It's but- bad. And then like, it's true to being a teenager. Like it's not brushed half the time. Right. Yeah. Like it's, it's a mess. When Tess as Anna is dressed, and Tess is like, what the hell are you doing? She's like, I've been wanting to comb this rat's nest forever. Like, I could so see my mom doing something yep. like that. A hundred percent. My mom as well. <laughs> I'm dying to get in this hair. So. And then their lines are so funny when they're like, she's like, all right, I'll drab down. And she says, well, I'll, oh, I'll drab up and I'll grunge down is what they yeah. agree on when they're changing their outfits to be more what they're supposed to be they should have just let each other pick i don't know why the outfit right right like they consult each other on nothing that's the whole thing like especially tess is anna she doesn't even try to be anna at school no she just she's just acting like herself as anna yeah she's baffling she has no respect that's the thing she she really doesn't understand her daughter as like this her own person Mm -hmm. and she doesn't Mm -hmm. really respect her she she in a sense she thinks maybe she knows better there's like an elitist high and mighty thought process and so this switch is really really good because it enlightens her how much stuff her daughter's really going through on a day-to-day basis that she's kind of just been making it worse because she's been Mm -hmm. ragging on her about it so much so what kills me about her though is that when she goes to school and is acting like herself as anna it's not even that she's trying to correct anna's behavior she's like scolding her friends and the and everything it's like that's too far you want to correct anna's behavior fine but you can't act like yourself at school when you're supposed to be a teenage girl i think that's just how tess maybe that's just her one of her flaws you know that she and also because she's a therapist, she's giving out unwanted advice because that's what yeah. she's used to. You know, she's just seeing all these people that need help potentially. But I know mm-hmm. if Jackie came to school and was, I was like, what the hell wrong with you? Like they let so much yeah. stuff <laughs> slide. They're just like <laughs> too hmm. much on it. <laughs> that's yeah. suspicious. <laughs> right. <What's going> on? <laughs> oh that's just that's Anna. Again, i guess like i guess the assumption that they swapped bodies and it's actually tess is probably a leap that they didn't think to take so. right but i would have been like bitch are you on drugs like what is happening right now and i guess she needed to take the like the test being that day was the catalyst of like she can't just stay home from school that day right right but it still was like find some sort of excuse something get out of there yeah uh, they could have said she was sick but like yeah right uh, if the yeah. only thing was the test and it's also an honors qualifying test by the way like they make it as if it's the sats <laughs> right why didn't, they, why didn't they just make it the sats like a much more normal test that everybody takes that could be <laughs> like level of importance is an like, honors qualifying exam like <laughs> just have her take it tomorrow right yes. or like a standardized <laughs> test at the yeah. state test that you have to take yeah it was just so weird so now we're being dropped off at school. I love Jamie Lee Curtis being shy when Jake like comes to say hi to Anna. <laughs> yeah. When she's getting out of the car, she's like, hey. <laughs> she does really well at like t- 
tapping into her being a kid. But when she was interviewed, she just said it was easy for her because she's always just a kid at heart. She's always been like that. I think this is her at her best. I I honestly, this is one of my favorite Jamie performances, even though she literally just won an Oscar. I think this is, I think she instantly transforms into a teenager. Mm -hmm. Everything she says, her mannerisms, the way she talks, the way she walks, she completely embodies what it's like to be a teenager as a grown woman. Yeah. Yeah. Especially the the scene at the Wango Tango where she's playing the guitar, like she's in her- Yes! She is living her best life. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't tell her she couldn't she couldn't play that guitar. So yeah. they had like they had training, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, it was from the the orgy. Where is that yeah. orgy band? Oh, yeah, band. The, the band orgy offered up one of their members to teach Jamie Lee how to play the guitar. And Ooh. although she practiced making the concert scene look as authentic as possible, a studio music studio musician dubbed over the guitar solo in the finished film you couldn't tell her that she wasn't bad she she said great she's like i i totally could have had my saw my my version on on the soundtrack she's like i don't know why they didn't (laughs) (laughs) i'm Um, and motherfucking curtis (laughs) put my version on there (laughs) and Lindsay was pretty good they said that she took to the guitar pretty well she did really well and oh. obviously her song made it to the soundtrack as a well banger. yeah <laughs> i like that both song <laughs> <laughs> i love both songs and that they sang mm-hmm. in in the movie pink slip but i love that they let both girls kind of have lead mm-hmm. you know so yes. it wasn't just Lindsay both times mm-hmm. so that was cool so Jake does ask her if she likes the hives and wants to go. Um, so she's uh, kind of excited. No. That's later because okay. he's just saying hi now. But what they, she, you know, they part ways. She gets yep. in the car. And now <laughs> this is my favorite part. Because you movie. love a fucking montage. <laughs> huh? No, I'm talking about what the little brother how they, they're they like oh ryan's like oh let's take so what's the boy's name oh, max or something harry. Right? yeah oh, harry. harry let's take harry to school and she's like he can walk <laughs> <laughs> and he's blocks. like he's like i forgot what she says like better get going or something yeah it, just <laughs> it is really make, funny it makes me laugh so hard when he does when she says that but then Ryan is like, she's like, I know you're super busy. He's more sensitive that she, that he thinks that she's kind of making the kids feel like he doesn't want to make time yes, for them or yes. whatever. And so he's pretty upset. And we, we learn more later about that. Yeah. So then we see Tess as Anna gets put in her fucking place about Stacy because <laughs> she walks up. Hey Stacy, what's going on? And Stacy literally pulls her shirt over her head and pushes her down. She like flips over a bike rack, like yes. which is also so not a girl thing to do. By no, the way, this was like no. misdone. Like she should have like like spilled something. Spilled something. On her. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it was it, for her to be taking her shirt above her head. I was like, what is that? Who wrote that? Yeah, yeah. that was very aggressive and girls don't do that yeah no and then we see anna as tess in the car she has her feet up on the dash and is like biting her nails and ryan goes to try and kiss her and she makes up (laughs) this story about having a cold sore (laughs) and then what i thought was going to be danielle's favorite part the shopping slash makeover montage the best (laughs) (laughs) so good and so she she goes because she has mom's money now she's got that platinum amex card so she goes shopping she did a great job she looks absolutely great when she comes out she she gets a haircut she gets her ear pierced (laughs) she's living her best grown life (laughs) my mom would beat me to it end of eternity if i went and pierced anything and ran up her 
credit cards. The piercing Anna was has, a little far. Piercing, yeah. We could have done without that, probably. <laughs> Anna has zero fear about Tess. Yeah. Yeah. But Tess also needed it. That haircut desperately was life. She needed it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so now with Tess, Anna's Tess shows up at the office. The phones are ringing out of control. She gets her list of clients for the day. <laughs> She can't see shit. She's like, oh my God, <laughs> Holy blind. God, she's blind. <laughs> As she says this, it's because this delivery man, because she thinks he's Evan, but it's not. <laughs> and it turns out that that guy is actually the love interest, Annabelle's love interest from the original version of Freaky Friday, Boris. Oh, that's cool. The delivery man. So he, like a little wink. Like no. they didn't parent trap when Vicky... The original Vicky was the mother-in-law in the parent trap movie. I didn't know that. Oh, love it, love it, love it. And then she answers one of the phone calls, and it's a dentist appointment with the root canal. And oh, I have so never funny. related to anything more in my life. She's like, I'm not doing that shit. <laughs> it's not even my tea. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> But then she also gets a fu- a call from the caterer confirming they've that they switched mm, from this Sam is and bad. all of it, and she's like, "No, that's <laughs> gross." And then she pisses the caterer off, and she's like, "Yeah, go ahead and cancel the whole thing." So now mom doesn't have a caterer for, and not wedding. only not only just that she doesn't have a caterer, I have a a feeling that there was a deposit she's never getting back. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, just like I know Anna is young, but she can't be this naive to know how, like, you can't just cancel all that food. Also, like, chill out. Like, she was going a mile a minute. Like, just think about it for two seconds and then just just put a pin in that. You don't even need to address that until later. (laughs) Right. You don't have to do anything. So many decisions. It's like, like, calm down. (laughs) Like, why not? approach it like the dental appointment i'm not right. dealing with that <laughs> yeah like i i'll call you back later i'll confirm right. later Some, right, right exactly call me can i call you back i'm busy yeah. like it right. doesn't need to be we're canceling everything <laughs> <laughs> and that's when evan comes in she doesn't remember his name properly she calls him like three and different he gets things. very offended <laughs> <laughs> he does. and well and it's because tess had like reassured him like yeah. All his worst fears are coming true. (laughs) Exactly. I see you. She's not answering the phones. And he's like, are you going to get that? She's like, no. He's like, I knew it. (laughs) I knew you didn't answer the phones. (laughs) So she's just like, okay, I'll answer the phones. (laughs) And then we see kind of a montage of like her seeing the, the patients. And it's just her asking and how did that make you feel a yeah. bunch of times? <laughs> Even though the patients are like and saying I how they feel. Really anxious, and she's like, and how did that make you feel? <laughs> anxious. I just said it. <laughs> One girl, you can't even, she's not even making any sentences. Yeah, no. <laughs> but my favorite was when a lady was talking about her daughter and how like she read her diary. She's like, whoa, 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 oh, yeah. violation. <laughs> <laughs> And I yeah. love like she has the yellow legal pad and it's all just doodles of like yeah. Jake's name and stuff. <laughs> but once the lady said she was reading her daughter's diary, that snapped yeah. her back to reality real quick. <laughs> and then meanwhile at school, Tess is in English class with Mr. Bates and he's having a pop quiz. So he's asking questions about Hamlet. Mom's like, oh, bet. I know Hamlet backwards and forwards. So he asks a question. She gives a really like insightful, thorough answer. And he's like, failed. That's you're you're really overreaching in your analysis. I just think it's crazy. Like what kind of pop quiz is this? Is everyone getting a question? Right. (laughs) You know, like how much are the questions worth? Is this a Jeopardy situation? Like I need to so know. what kind of pop quiz, quiz is just answering random questions aloud with the whole class like yeah right <laughs> that's not a pop quiz that's like did you do the reading right. <laughs> and the first guy he was like 
leading him to the answer and then he's like <laughs> right. you get a B. And he's then, like handing out grades too like it doesn't great. make any sense and then tess gets an f just for being her and tess as anna is thinking to herself like i've seen him before how do i know this teacher and then she realizes that he went to high school with her and asked her to prom and she said no and so he's been taking out on Anna this whole time. So she does say, like, we can let the school board know that you've been harassing the daughter of someone you asked out in high school. Yeah. Like, this shit needs to stop. So she kind of puts him in his place. And um, her friends are, like, watching. So now they think, like, she's awesome for uh -huh. her doing that. Is this when she does she go and take her test next? no mom shows up in the volvo right that's, right that's the other weird thing is like mom shows they up, leave school they in leave the middle of the day and then she goes back to take the test yes. it makes no sense <laughs> where did they leave to go <laughs> to the chinese restaurant right oh yes. right they wanted to go <laughs> and this is where mama what did you do <laughs> and grandma's just like i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> pretty much like you need to look at the fortune and you mm -hmm. need to you know make it come true essentially like yeah i think it's so cool. funny when she tries to deny it at first she's like i don't know like i don't know what you're talking about and they're like <laughs> we know you do and then she caves and it's like all right fine <laughs> <laughs> so they uh, she brings anna back and i believe she, this is when tess now meets ryan he surprises her with no not yet not yet no she has to go to the parent teacher conference at the, the surprise oh, parent teacher right. conference also in the middle of the day i yeah. was making popcorn <laughs> when this part came up my bed oh, but you know as soon as the teacher came on the screen i knew who it was did you know who it was i didn't see this part <laughs> i was I making popcorn oh me. oh it's mrs Fennell. Yes. yes yeah 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 Mrs. Spinell uh, from Monica, Veronica <laughs> Mars. <laughs> Which is also cool because Julie Gonzalo and Stacey, who plays Stacey Hinkhouse, was also on Veronica Mars. Who did she play on Veronica Mars? She was their What's Her Face's college roommate that ended up dating Taylor. Is that her name? No. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Hey, what's up? It's always 25 years ago at Retro Late Fee. That's right. 25 years ago, Carol and I began recording our thoughts on TV and movies. And now you can catch us talking about 90210, Dawson's Creek, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, or whatever's popular in the theater that week. That's right. It's Retro Late Fee, the latest in entertainment from 25 years ago. Check it out. Anyway, back from our Veronica Mars our tribe. So... While we're at Harry's school, we find out he's been having some trouble with bullies. And at first, Anna's test is just uninterested. Like, well, he needs to toughen up, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But then the teacher shows her a, a paper he wrote about his hero, and he had written it about Anna. And so she starts to melt a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she goes out, and she's talking to him about it, and he's like... Um, she, she asked him like, why do you fight so much if you really like her? And he says like, it's more fun to fight. So like, Typical. that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> and now, now are they at the TV station or is she taking her test? Yes. So now it cuts to Tess as Anna and she's walking in to take the test. And so she tries one more time to bury the hatchet with Stacy. In such a bizarre, weird way. Like, <laughs> she doesn't phrase it like any normal human being would. She's like, Stacy, we've been friends so long. What happened? It's like, Anna would remember what happened. Like, right. like it doesn't make any sense. 
Well, Anna even kind of admits like she doesn't really know what happened, but she just right. knows that like she stopped talking to her and like wasn't friends anymore. So it's just she kind of just accepted it. Yeah. And Stacy totally plays her because she's like, yeah, let's sit next to each other, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and now during the test, first off, mom is not as smart as she thinks she is because it starts asking <laughs> questions about pie. And she's like, I've never used pie. What is pie again? Like, she's like, Anna's never going to use pie. And quite frankly, we have all never used pie. Nope. Never. All that shit when you were sitting in math class and they were like, you're not going to have a calculator in the real world. It's like, oh, we all carry around calculators every single day of our lives. Right. <laughs> Our spreadsheets <laughs> even calculate for us. Yep. Right. <laughs> and if you can't do it, things. get you a Jackie and she'll make a formula. <laughs> I do love a spreadsheet. <laughs> and so Tess says Anna is sitting next to Stacy during the test and Anna's like, hey, look. And it's like a note that says, I'm so glad we're friends again. And then like as soon as Anna looks over, Stacy's telling on a bitch that she's yeah. cheating. I would have grabbed that note so fast and say, actually, no, this, yeah, you know, <laughs> notes right here, right? She was so she good trick, me. though. I will hand it much more girl like than the weird yes. hair, hair pulling that went on earlier. <laughs> um, so she gets kicked out and yep, she's back in detention, <laughs> which is For open the second open. time. <laughs> Might as well call detention seven fucking eleven the way it's open <laughs> all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is when ryan surprises anna's tess that she has an interview because she has a book that was just published and so she has an interview so they go to the dotty robertson show it looks like like a local yeah celebrity public show. abscess kind yes. of a <laughs> vibe like joan on parks and rec Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was yes. I, at first I was like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Jackie doesn't really watch Parks and Rec, but, no, but thank I know you. what you're talking about. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but here's and... my thing about this. This is crazy behavior of Ryan, even if it was actually Tess's test. Because she does not strike me as the type of woman that wants like weird surprise interviews on her very busy day when she already has nine thousand things to do including a rehearsal dinner that night yeah i think she <laughs> said like i think he did it because she wanted to be on there and i think they work together i feel like maybe the way they met is like he's her, oh, her like okay publisher or like something. even if it was tess it seemed like a crazy thing she wouldn't like <laughs> yeah it seemed like uh, she needed to have it planned in her palm pilot correct for like, like she needs weeks. to know exactly what she's doing so that she can plan her day and that she can be prepared who wants to be like sprung to have an interview even I've, obviously she wrote the book so she would know what to say but even still don't you want to prepare a little you don't want to be thrown right on the stage by yes. your fiance <laughs> <laughs> well poor ryan striking out again yeah poor ryan. the talk but the talk the lady who plays the talk show host Dottie robinson was actually played by dina spivey waters who is the director mark waters wife which oh, it's cool because she was very good <laughs> yeah i've seen her in a lot of things like as a character actress and mm -hmm. i was like oh i did not know they were married interesting yeah so yeah like Anna as Tess is now panicking because she's like, I don't know what to say yeah. about this book. Everything she, she pronounced the title, <laughs> but everything that she's doing, I feel like I would do this. Like, okay, we gonna do this and yeah. like reading through chapters, mm -hmm. trying to find little tidbits to like throw out there. But she doesn't do a great. No, she's she's not like old people are tired I'm that's like, the... are we are really tired the funniest <laughs> moment though is when she realizes what it's about she's like oh senescence like senile old people i got it okay now i got this <laughs> <laughs> and i just like i love she's just like why are we so tired <laughs> I drink like, what caffeine would Tess, this morning. What would Tess have even said to that? <laughs> like, <laughs> bizarre thought, question. <laughs> she, I think she would have made it really boring. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. yeah. And very like technical. Mm -hmm. And Grandpa's like, I might actually read this one. <laughs> <laughs> and the weird thing is though, Dottie has well. I mean, she does crowd surf in the audience and tells them all to <laughs> scream, but. Dottie has Tess escorted out of the studio. 
Look, Dottie don't want nobody upstaging her. Oprah um, don't get people upstaging her and doing crazy shit like this, like Tom Cruise. Now, yeah. you know Tom Cruise's ass wasn't allowed to be back on the show after his <laughs> antics. So Tess was totally in her Tom Cruise bag during this entire thing. Mm-hmm. So she got to go. Yeah. She's on the no-fly list at <laughs> Dottie's show. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jake comes in and, like, just... He doesn't even sneak Tessa's Anna out of detention. They just walk out. Which also, like, he says he works there. So wait, he works there? As what? Okay, like, what so, <laughs> yeah, because she's like, why are you always in detention then? He's right, like, and he's well, like, I, I work, work here. here. How old are you? And works where? What is he doing? <laughs> Every time we see him, he's walking around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, somebody need to check that pedophile list, that local list. He might be on it. And then he he walks through. Okay. Number one, every school I worked in, like the teacher's lounges were not set up that way. And the teachers ate with their like fellow grade level. So it was only like max, maybe like five or six teachers at a time. And usually teacher's lounges are not that nice. (laughs) <laughs> we sat at like the tables that the kids sat at just in a room surrounded by like the copy, the copy machine <laughs> and like the big cutter paper cutter. So, but they walk through and it's like, it's filled with teachers just because they're movies. all taking the tests. So I'm thinking maybe that's why they're all together because I only need one of the teachers to watch them oh i guess and so the rest of them but then the tests were already in the room so they had finished checking the test question mark yeah. i don't maybe, know <laughs> maybe school's over i don't know because detention is always Unclear. open <laughs> i don't know if this is an after school activity did the bell ring i don't know and then i got distracted because there was a molly maids ads on ad on the tv in the teacher's lounge and those ladies were doing some dancing <laughs> that was questionable I don't know. I was very confused. And then he's just like walks by all these teachers and lets her into like the like no student file mm-hmm. room. Whatever he did at the school, he's being fired. Like I don't he's not gonna work there <laughs> soon enough. <laughs> okay, so he's not a student. I guess I not. So unless he's like Wallace and was like a an office aide during yeah. a couple of his periods. But he stay working. He stay having a job. <laughs> and then he had an after school job. Yeah. yeah. He pops up at the cafe. <laughs> <laughs> so he lets her take no answers. <laughs> he lets her finish her test. And she's like, she, you know, now, because again, this is judgmental test here. She's been judging him. But now she's like, you know what? It's not so bad. But then she sees Stacy's test mm. and she's like, this bitch is going down. And she starts erasing all of her answers. And Ruthless. he's like, mm, as she deserves. <laughs> yeah. But he's a little perturbed. He doesn't like this side of her. Yeah. So he's like completely turned off at this point. Which is so weird, too, by the way, because he's like sneaking her the bad boy. Like, and he's like the ba- bad boy. So what? He is like put off by her doing something like rebellious it's weird like he almost I, wanted her to be like nice and good it's strange his i don't know if it's that she's the bad girl like i think she kind of explains that you know things went awry and he's just i think he's trying to be nice and help her out i don't know if it's necessarily that she he's trying to be bad but i think her doing that makes shows her immaturity level to him in a yeah. sense so I think that's why he's like turned off by it because he's real super chill, you know, real lax. Yeah. So, but it's also like, I can't be around those girl things that you do. <laughs> oh, true, true. That's <laughs> actually probably what's underneath. <laughs> Caddy for me. <laughs> right. So, but then she's like very entitled because she says, you know, give me a ride. I need a ride. Yeah. And because she sees her, 
she sees herself on TV oh, yeah. as Anna crowd surfing on local and cable. Like, Your mom's cool as shit. <laughs> oh yeah, because she's like the yeah yeah yes and blah blah blah. She's uh-huh. talking about all the bands, and he hears all these keywords. He's like, yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's really cool. And he's like, no, I'm not. I'm not taking you. You already said you your mom doesn't want you to be on the motorcycle. And she's like, oh, no, it's fine. And he's like, nah, he leaves her yeah. and goes to his second job. And <laughs> Tess, when she gets taken, like, kicked off the set, Ryan didn't realize. And so now he's with the kid and grandpa, Harry and grandpa. So he's trying to find Tess. Tess is at the coffee shop living her best life. Well, a.k.a. Anna. And there's yeah. her boo. Yeah. Anna, as Tess, is at the coffee shop just kicking it with <laughs> with Jake. He's into it. They're singing a cover of Baby One More Time to each yep. other. It's Her mannerisms in that scene are so good. Where She is such like a teenage girl when she's like <laughs> hunched over and like talking to him as she's like playing with the straw wrapper. Yes. <laughs> And then she, he she asked him to give her a ride because she's got to get home. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's like, okay. So they get on his motorcycle. And Ryan is just confused, not because he's, I think he tried calling her, doesn't know where she is. He turns to his left and there's his woman on the <laughs> back of a motorcycle with some man. Just living her best. Like, the look on her living... face. She's like in pure bliss. Her. Yes. <laughs> Just in a dreamlike state. Mm -hmm. I love her face in this scene. It cracks me up. (laughs) (laughs) So then when they all gather at home, Anna gets home. Well, Tess as Anna and Anna as Tess, they both get home exchanging notes, kind of like bickering because clearly. They didn't go the way they planned. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But Ryan is like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Do you not want to do this? I saw you on the motorcycle. Anna can't think on her feet. And luckily, Tess, as Anna, is like, oh, mom didn't want me to hang out with this dude. But she was like, Tess him out. But like, the way she responds is like, oh, really? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yes shut up <laughs> ruining my life well and then jake is outside singing baby one more time that he... is the <laughs> best part that's his only likable part when he's out there screaming the lyrics to baby one more time i cackle it's the funniest <laughs> thing <laughs> yeah she it's a Tess, whole lot <laughs> it's a lot going on Too Tess, much. anna as tess has to get dressed then they hear ryan and Tessa's Anna has to go like and the way she debos his ass like like knocks completely him out. knocks him to the ground <laughs> <laughs> and now and it was almost like he was in a spell it's lit my my yes. man it's been less than an, an hour and now you're trying to hunch my mom you don't the think that's love weird with her it's the strangest thing and he's like no and but the way he's talking to Anna, quote unquote, yeah. Tess, is as if that's not my fucking mom. Yeah. Like, yeah. And so then, what does Tess do as Anna? She makes out with him and to like say, oh, oh well, everything that my mom knows, it's because I don't know. Yeah. To me. So now he's confused. They go to the restaurant, which I call the Tower of Terror. Well, she does. I do love um her line when she goes back to the car and she's like, well, he definitely likes you for your mind. Because <laughs> yeah. he's, he's obsessed with whichever version she's in. <laughs> <laughs> so they go to the rehearsal dinner and it's, it's a shitload of people there. It, like, it looks like people. the wedding. It's nicer than the wedding. Yeah. It is. It's like in this really lovely space. It almost feels like it's like in the middle of maybe like a museum or something. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. it's very nice, catered, the whole nine. They're both dressed black tie. Yeah. And Anna's friends show up to kidnap her to take her to the Wingo Tango. Not like 
let's talk about this. When you say kidnap, <laughs> they literally not, were going to kidnap her. <laughs> they have they they have tape and everything. I'm like, what were y'all planning? <laughs> Why did you think you tape and right? it's just beyond? <laughs> but also another question I had is like is Ryan famous or something? Because why is there legit security at this party? Oh, yeah, I didn't even they, think about that. <laughs> they find the girls. Yes. They're like, they're not on the guest list. I'm like, how thick is this part? Like, how yeah. exclusive is this little rehearsal that you have security and a guest list that you're really abiding to? And then it's, Jake is just like... the He just strolls in. <laughs> right. <laughs> he just he just walks right in. No security for Jake. Yeah, He's dressed and, and in his regular like, clothes. Why are you here now? Like it's so <laughs> bizarre. And then finally Ryan's like, okay, it's gonna be 20 minutes. Just go. It's a block and a half away. Like just go and come back. It's fine. And, no and one I'm, thought of this sooner is beyond right, me. Right. I don't know like what the thinking even, especially since it's literally right next but to Yeah, that's because Tess <laughs> never really originally listened yeah. to what no, the but request even was. Anna was like, oh no, I definitely am not going to be able to go because like blah, blah, blah. Like, right. you, you just pitch it to your mom as in like, oh, it'll, I'll be back in half an hour. I'm not yeah. even going to miss the whole rehearsal dinner. It's literally across like my, the street. <laughs> yeah, my friends will bring my guitar. Like, yeah. it'll be all set up. I'm just going to run play yeah. come back not yeah. a problem clearly anna is not the best communicator no not at all no. so but i do like that ryan he's a, is a good guy com- yeah he, he's really he's pretty great throughout he gives a lot of allowances to tess and her crazy behavior through the whole thing <laughs> probably because he i think he's also you know i know i said it's like oh women being crazy but i mm-hmm. think he also chalks it up to the fact that weddings are so stressful yeah, yeah she seems stressed more than anything so he's right. kind of like giving her some allowance because of that but i do like how he's very clear in his communication he ryan is a good mm-hmm. communicator and yes he says you know one i don't like that you would even imply that like you're making me out to be some step monster that i don't want to be and that's not <laughs> the role and if you think that's who i am or what I'm going to be like, I don't want to be a part of it. Yeah. And also, you really should be going to support your daughter. Right. Like that he says something like, uh, you know, you you always put the kids first and that's good. That's how it should be. That's right. how I want it. Like, that's how it always should be. So you shouldn't think that I'm trying to step into your being a mother. Yeah. So I I thought those were really nice moments. And it's just perfect that anna as tess is the one here yeah because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. she was so like prejudgmental of him yeah she didn't even give with him a chance. reason with like yeah. she had you know she had a reason but she definitely took no time to actually get to know him at all and this was the first right. time she's really even heard anything he said right yeah so, so now we're at the wingo tango tess as anna is freaking the fuck out she's She's a terrible job (laughs) she doesn't even try (laughs) and the friends are so supportive they're like it doesn't matter if we suck like but we're just doing this thing but at one point her friend looks at her like like, can you do something right she's like what are you doing (laughs) how is it that i've seen this movie so many times and this was the first showing that i actually noticed that there were two guys in this band I noticed the drummer yeah. was a guy. There's a second guy. Yeah, uh, what's another he doing? Like, bass player or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't he had see curly him. hair. <laughs> so Tess's Anna is just petrified. Can't do anything. Is just standing there. They're mm-hmm. in the middle of the set. Her friends are looking at her like, "You need to do something." And Anna, as Tess, is watching this like play do something do something something. just don't just stand there (laughs) (laughs) so she runs backstage unplugs uh tess's anna's guitar yeah plugs her guitar in motions tess's anna to come backstage like hey just fake it i'm gonna play great idea and then and then she rocks it and then like the way tess's anna dances is such a <laughs> dance. yes 
it's very Wonderful. it's very like the monkeys the partridge family kind yes. of like <laughs> like the <laughs> bopping <laughs> back and forth it reminded me of the brady bunch movie yes in the 90s <laughs> my question i have two questions one why so if the battle of the bands is open to apparently all ages because they're in high school yeah why when tess is coming in they're like real strict about Checking her the ID. ID. i know also like is it that easy to get behind stage, stage? <laughs> and to like unplug and nobody's seeing all this shit happen that her playing on the side like nobody's questioning this I think I okay. mean it was pretty low budge. It was local band, so I'm sure they're just like, oh, that person must just be with the band. That's someone's mom because playing the guitar in the, in the wings. I, mean, I do love what she calls her over though, and they're like going over like how she has to behave, and she's like, I mean, you're telling me you've never been to a concert, and she's like, well, I went to the Stones, and she's like, all right, act like Keith, and she has no idea what you she's talking about. She's like, <laughs> Richards, mom. <laughs> But so she knows who Keith Richards and the Rolling Stones are. But earlier when her mom says, you dress me like Stevie Nicks, she said, I don't know who who he is. Right. How do you not know who Stevie Nicks is? (laughs) I mean, if she's in, I I don't know. That's hard. Yeah. I I think it was just to make it funny. A little bit. Yeah. (laughs) So Jake is also there, and falls of course, instantly in he's love a with Anna fucking again. Stalker at this point because <laughs> she plays the guitar well. Also, <laughs> suddenly he's in love with her again. He didn't notice that that bitch wasn't playing none of the chords, right? No one noticed music. that the the <laughs> guitarist was not playing the guitar very um... clearly. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. So after after this, they go back to the party. I believe they win, right? Yeah, or at least they get move on to whatever to it the is next, they're doing. Next. I don't know what the goal even was there, but <laughs> <laughs> so they it get says, back to the yeah. They just say you're definitely in. Yeah, whatever. That... <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> so they get back to the party, and now Tess is in a realizes like they're not going to switch and she feels really bad because ryan has just been so great and so and she doesn't want anna to have to marry him like that would be way traumatic so she tells anna to go tell you know to let ryan down like to postpone the wedding and also she says that like you know i know i've learned that you're not really ready for this yourself you know Mm -hmm. like you seem like you need some more time and you could tell, like, this is really bothering Tess and that she won't, you know, she's kind of tearing up. And at this point, Anna's like, I know exactly what I need to do. And instead of saying anything to Ryan, she actually makes a toast and is able to kind of let her mom know about her feelings, about how hard it's been about the their dad passing away. But also that she does recognize how happy her mom has been and just like, that they could make room for Ryan to be in their family, which is super sweet. It's a great speech. She does a really good job. (laughs) Really, really good job. Not only just like being able to speak to her mom kind of in code, but also it seems like it's coming from Tess. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, they're able to switch back. And that's where you see like the all of a sudden there's the earthquake. And, And now everyone can kind of feel it. I do like that they don't make they make the switch but they don't have like like ghost spirits floating out of them or anything it's just kind of like oh yeah you know <laughs> like they both just like stare up at yeah. the ceiling like they're possessed <laughs> for a couple of seconds it's mm. so weird and, and then I, we huh? never we never read the the fortune so it says a journey soon begins its prize reflected in another's eyes when what you see is what you lack, then selfless love will change you back. So because Tess did the Wango Tango for mm-hmm. Anna, that was her act of selfless love. And then uh, Anna's speech as Tess was her act of selfless love. So that's what 
what the catalyst was. I love how like when they do switch back, Anna's like, and I'm back, y'all. And let me just finish <laughs> the <laughs> speech. <laughs> like, <laughs> like the way she walks in was like, I've arrived, y'all. <laughs> It was just so funny to me, <laughs> like, as if she was finishing the it's speech. Like, it's like Lindsay Lohan forgot, <laughs> like, that she, like, she's like, oh, I forgot how to act like a teenager now. Now yeah. I'm like, <laughs> she didn't, forgot the original character she was playing. She's <laughs> right. Been so used to acting as Tess. <laughs> like, that's just me. <laughs> Here I am, world. <laughs> And so now it's the next day at the wedding. Anna is wearing a truly terrible, like, early aughts dress. So Ooh. early aughts, though. <laughs> I do love the color. Mm-hmm. It is pretty. It's just, it's all sorts of wrong. Yeah. Like, she looked so gorgeous the night before. I was like, just just wear the black dress again. Mm-hmm. Right. And Tess's, uh, like, Mormon dress that she's wearing <laughs> uh, wasn't a fan. It's like a pant- like a dress suit or something. Yeah. I needed some flowiness, like, that she had learned a little bit of youngness. Oh, or true. Like a that would have been good. Or something. Something. Yeah. I was like, you look drab. <laughs> you look like the 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me want a hot dog real bad. <sighs> yeah so grandpa and harry start arguing oh and the whole thing like when they went back in to question the chinese restaurant owner she's like do you need a caterer <laughs> and, and anna's test is like well actually yeah <laughs> we do because i kind of fired the old one so that is the reason they are at the wedding and so Aging grandma notices that Harry and grandpa are arguing and runs over to to give them fortune cookies because she has learned nothing. <laughs> her and her meddling ways. She thinks it works and it did work. I mean, yeah, it did. It's an extreme method, but she's it's not without its merits. Yeah. And so the the daughter runs and tackles her and snatches away the fortune cookies. <laughs> As so t- to have a repeat <laughs> <laughs> two things about this scene so in an alternate ending harry and grandpa do open their the cookies and they they have like a body swap and it kind of sets up a potential for a sequel but it gets that would cut. be a terrible sequel so I'm glad, that they did, I'm glad that they didn't do that not invested in those characters <laughs> no, whatsoever not at all. secondly there was a tiktoker that slowed down this scene when Pepe comes to like knock them over you see Harry change from a little kid to like a grown-ass man as the stunt double oh my gosh that's hilarious (laughs) and all the times I've seen I never saw it before but now it's like I can't see it can't see it like (laughs) like they don't even (laughs) try to fix it (laughs) <laughs> and that is freaky friday <laughs> well yeah and pink flip is playing obviously yeah and the best song yes you're it you're the ultimate, ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> what fun factoids did we miss let's look and see Well, one of the things that I thought was kind of cool was that the producer, Andrew Gunn, had actually reached out to Jodie Foster to play Annabelle in again, but as the mother, but she passed. She said that she was concerned her casting would be a distraction. She a lie. She just didn't want to do it. And then Sigourney Weaver was also considered for the role of Tess. I can see that. Which is cool because later, another movie, you again... Jamie Lee and Sigourney played like rivals. Yeah, <laughs> that's a. I like that movie. It's uh, uh, what else? This wasn't the only time Chad Michael Murray acted alongside Julie Go- Gonzalo. They also were co stars in a Cinderella story. This movie was in the midst this is height the height of the 
Hillary Duff and Lindsay Lohan like beef. Mm-hmm. Well, and Chad Michael Murray was a, a damn chess piece in their horrible hatred for each other. So obviously Lindsay was in this movie with Chad. But at the premiere, Chad brought Hillary Duff. Such a shit starter, I swear. <laughs> well, he didn't know what the fuck was going on. I don't think he knew, but like apparently he both knew. he knew. <laughs> I think both of them were like talking about each other or whatever or whatever. And the both of them worked really hard to like kick each other off to get each other off of the red carpets and all sorts of stuff. Like I don't, to not... I don't think I knew all this. Damn. Oh yeah, it was it was pretty bad. So apparently <laughs> there was an episode called Those Freaky McGuire's an installment of the Lizzie McGuire show that was considered a fourth version of the Mary Rogers story, who is the author of the book mm-hmm. that this is based on. And McGuire's star Hillary Duff had the rivalry with Lindsay Lohan. So apparently Hillary was mad, allegedly, of losing out on this role. So she demanded that her show get freaky for one installment, like a Freaky Friday episode. Oh my God. But yeah, these girls... The the back and forth was insane. One day I will do, I think when we do a Cinderella story, I will do a full timeline of. Boy. Much like it's, the Ben Affleck J-Lo timeline you did. But there's just so much to dive into. Like there's a lot. There's the Vanity Fair cover that they did. Oh, that where, I remember. <laughs> where Lindsay had to be photoshopped into, there's like a panel with, the two of them and, oh and, and someone else like they could not even be together it was bad i didn't know that yeah allegedly well it's not allegedly it all started because of r.i.p aaron carter and it just oh okay. snowballed oh. into craziness oof chad michael murray at the Apparently. center of it all <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, he was not allowed to ride the motorbike during the movie and was only allowed to pose on it for scenes where it was stationary. Which is true because if you know the scene where Jamie Lee is like on his holding him, you don't see his yeah. face. It's just a motorcycle a helmet. helmet. Yeah. Oh, I love this one. So Jamie Lee Curtis, when she found out that Lindsay Lohan was going to be playing the daughter role, she was she was like, oh, the girl from the parent trap which twin did she play i see Ugh. jamie lee is just like us because i really thought oh yeah when i was younger i thought that they were two different girls too yeah <laughs> <laughs> and mary rogers the author of the book considers this the best adaptation calling it the first time the characters seemed real despite the unreal goings on and oh. plucky instead of whiny oh that's cool nice and the shots in the opening credits are actually photos of Jamie Lee Curtis and her daughter, Annie Guest, which I figured is that they looked like real photos. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, really... <laughs> like they weren't Lohan. weird Photoshop. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was like, that's definitely a photo of Jamie Lee and her daughter. <laughs> and apparently Dina Lohan was in the final scene. She is in the background She's in the background dancing with an older man, but there's an awkward moment where she is seen looking directly at the camera. One job, <laughs> Dina. Good job. Kudos. You had one job and you did it poorly. <laughs> I think Mark Waters also makes a cameo in the wedding as well. You see him holding a baby or something, I believe. I noticed that baby. I was like, why is that baby here? <laughs> I don't know why I found it so out of place that I did. Get that baby out of here. <laughs> <laughs> all right well before we go into our ratings why don't you tell us how everyone can find out about your podcast tickets please and where to find you on social so my podcast that i co-host with my cousin Catherine is tickets please you can find it wherever you find your podcast if you're listening to this you already know that and then we are tickets please pod on tiktok and on instagram and you guys know this by now but just a reminder, we're at No More Late Fees on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, and now we are threaded. So check us out and make sure you Send follow. Us him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making fetch happen, Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Alexa, we're going to 
to start with you. What is your today rating of, of Fr- Freaky Friday? I'm going to keep it as buy it because I can't get rid of that nostalgia, despite the fact that we we picked out some of its flaws here. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't have many. It's just it didn't have things many. that we question. Yeah. I'm going with would buy it again. Like, again, it was such an easy watch for me and I really found myself enjoying it and it was short. It's not yeah overly long. I loved it. Peak Lindsay Lohan. Jackie. <sighs> oh boy, ran on our parade, why don't you? <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. It's just not something I'm going to watch again unless <laughs> I'm at Danielle's house. So it wasn't like horrible terrible it just wasn't my cup of tea so two-day rental it's fine it's fine if you want to disagree with me (laughs) hit us up at (laughs) our quick drops 909-601 and mlf and mlf 909-601-6653 twat us at the twitters hem us at the threads and or you can leave a message at our pod Spotify for podcasters account, and you can be featured on a future episode. And thank you, Alexa, for joining us. We hope you had as much fun as we did. Yes. We love your podcast. Thank and... you so much for having me. Oh, of course. Anytime. And as always, be kind and rewind.